I'm going to tell you we're in Montour County along one of the prettiest wetlands I've ever seen. And guess what? It's man-made. Lori Green is a professor with Bloomsburg University. You could see the tree swallow boxes that have been put up. It's all part of research that's now in its second year. We're at the property of Marlin Tanner and um, we're here to take a look at some of the nest boxes that we put up um, earlier this year. The reason why we picked this place is because um, we were able to establish the nest boxes last year. We had a lot of tree swallows come. We had a lot of babies and so we're like, okay, we want to use this property again. The other cool thing about this property is that it was actually constructed in 2016. It's a relatively young artificial wetland and it's, a, it's about 11 acres. So, um, so it's, a, it's a nice large property. It's relatively newly constructed. And that compares to some of our other properties that we have that are relatively small, only a few acres. So the whole purpose of my project is to kind of get a read on all of these different artificial wetlands. Some are really small, some are big, some are new, some are older, and say, okay, well, how are they all functioning a little bit differently? And so, and also I want to bring you out because we have babies. So we get to see some chicks. And of course, we're talking about tree swallows. So we're talking and this about is tree what, swallows. Uh, the middle of the third year of the project, is that so right? We're actually in the middle of the second year. So okay. we just got going last year. Um, so this is my se uh, the second year. And so we're actually really, really happy. We even got better um, uh, colonization this year than we got last year. So a male and female tree swallow find each other. Mm -hmm. um, how many chicks do they usually have and, uh, and about what time of the year? So average chick, um, it, the, the clutch size, so the number of uh, chicks they can have varies from about three. And then it, at one of my sites, I actually have nine eggs in a nest. Wow. I've never, I looked at the literature, I haven't even heard about that many. Now, not all the chicks will survive. So, um, you know, even the average clutch size is about five or six. And you expect anywhere from about, you know, maybe 10% mortality, even in the nest boxes, sometimes a little higher if we have a cold snap or a heat wave, something like that. I love walking around wetlands, the noises, the different birds. We've seen everything from frogs dr jump to mm -hmm. red-winged blackbirds. Yeah, this is a site that's really active for red-winged blackbirds. Oh, I love it. So this is one of the boxes the, that you have what yeah. in? So we have nestlings in here, and so, um, this is, uh, this is box nine of our 16 that are at this site. So I'm gonna open up this box and um, these, these chicks are approximately eight days old. Eight days old. So I'm gonna put my hand under here. Um, just make sure nobody gets, you know, excited. But if you go ahead and take a peek in there, they're I starting do. to get their feathers. Um, so you can go ahead and, you know, take a look. <clears throat> Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, I, I think there's about four or five in there. You can move the feather down. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <gasps> way cool. This is what I like live for. I waited oh. all year to come to this point to oh. see these babies. <laughs> so now you know that they're about eight days old because yep. you were you were here what when the eggs were laid and then followed it through. Yeah. So we've been tracking um, the egg laying, um, you know, for all of sort of April and May, kind of keeping an idea. We want to know when they first laid their eggs, and and then we can do some calculations to figure out when they're going to hatch. So we we caught most of these um, around 24 hours from the time they hatch. I know exactly how old they are. Right. And then um, so that allows us to sort of track their development, but also so we know when we hit that 12 day mark. We're gonna, I'm gonna put a little black uh, band on here and we know not to touch them so we don't prematurely fledge them. So 12 year, days and older. 12 days and older. They're left alone by your research and then when do they jump out of the box? So typically they'll, they'll, they'll fledge right around 18 or 19 days. I know a couple, um, some of them will fledge a little bit later but typically around 18, 19 days and then we have a bunch of birdies. And, one, and some of the great research says that if uh, that they babies will tend to return to the site that they're fledged, so we could continue to grow this population. No banding this year. No banding this year. So we'll, we'll maybe we'll take that up another time. But this time um, we're just gonna you know let them fledge, and you know I'm gonna hope I recognize one next year. <laughs> cool. I'll recognize them. They're my babies, right? <laughs> You may remember the story we did last year with Dr. Corbin from Bloomsburg University. We banded tree swallows. Well, take a look at these two birds we managed to capture on video. This one is wearing a band on its left leg, and this one is wearing a band on its right. It's pretty interesting to say the least. Tree swallows tend to, um, they, kind of, they tend to come up to North America um, and into Canada and stuff. This is where they reproduce, you know, raise their chicks and stuff. 
Um, probably by about the end of June, beginning of July, most of the nestlings will be done. Um, they'll hang out for a little while longer and then they'll all start moving south. And so then they'll start moving into you know, parts of South America, the Central America, a little bit of the Caribbean. Um, they actually, some of them will overwinter in Florida. And so, you know, they'll hang out down there um, during the winter months uh, and then they'll come back up usually around March. So you have your boxes obviously around one of the most beautiful wetlands mm -hmm. on a beautiful piece of property, bug eaters. Yep, yep. What are you trying to learn about the bugs you're collecting? So um, uh, tree swallows um, typically will catch uh, flying insects. So um, all the sort of things that sort of annoy us, right? So they'll catch them, lots of different flies and stuff like that. And um, what I'm super interested in as an ecologist is, you know, what are they eating? And does it matter, you know, is it gonna be different here at this type of property? Or are they eating something slightly different at a smaller wetland at uh, maybe a more natural site and other things like that? I wanna tease apart, like, what are they really getting at? Because as conservation biologists, we need to know what are they eating? How does the role of, you know, restoration play in terms of their food availability? So today um, we're gonna check out some chicks, but I'm also gonna show you how I'm gonna collect some of the bugs so that we can sequence um, the, the DNA of those bugs, get an idea of what these birds are eating. You say relatively new. This looks like this has been here forever, doesn't it? It does, and there was probably some some sort of wetland here, but I know that about 2016, um, the. Uh, they came in and went ahead and opened it up. I think they, they addressed some of the drainage issues. They know that they did some strategic planting and stuff. And that, that's really different than some of the other sites that we have where, you know, they may have put in the, the wetland or maybe addressed some drainage, but may or may not have adjusted vegetation and stuff. So they, each one of these is gonna be really different. I see you're flying solo. I am. Did, is COVID keeping you away from ch kids? What's happening? <laughs> well, yeah, actually, um, we were not allowed to have um, any undergrads helping us this summer, which was a big bummer because I had a big group of them that was really interested. So it's myself and my graduate student, Ty Basinger. Um, Ty is actually uh, in class right now, and so um, he can't join us. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully next summer, you know, maybe if things settle down and we can be safe, we'll ho hopefully have uh, a bigger group of students. If people want to check in on you, find out more about it, what's the best way to do that? So I have, a, I have my own research webpage. Um, it's drlaurigreenresearch.com. Uh, they can email me, um, lgreen at bloomu.edu. Um, I do have a faculty page through Bloomsburg University. So there's a, a few different ways to, to reach out and follow what we're doing.